how do you set goals? How do you do it? I'm a I'm a planner guy. You make a to do list. Phone? Where's my phone? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I make to do lists. I I love I love checking boxes. I make little boxes and back before electronic planners I had I would just make my own on three by five cards originally. Things that I could write, put a little box next to so later I could check the box. <laughs> Sometimes I wrote it down after I'd done it just so, so you that could I could check the box. <laughs> Uh, and and it's an amazing thing to me. If you write some goals down, you write them down, and you don't even know how you're going to attain them. Somehow, you just magically are thinking in the right ways to do the right things at the right times, and you accomplish some of those things. Do you sometimes sometimes have those lists um, side by side or on the same list? The little ones like go to the dry cleaner, and the bigger ones like go to China. Yeah. Yeah, well, projects versus things to do, I suppose, yeah. is what we're talking. And, and my, they might get intermingled. A lot of times I find in order to keep them in front of my face, I'll have them on today's calendar. Mm -hmm. And then I've got to move them to tomorrow. I've got to move them tomorrow. I've got to move them tomorrow. Uh, it's, but it is best to have big goals and then the little small components, which is all the boxes you get to check. You hardly ever get to check the project boxes. So you have to have small things so that you can check a box every day and go to bed satisfied. But I, I did this. Uh, before we had our first product, I sat down and, and wrote down some goals, uh, which were out, outrageous. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were they were ridiculous. I would now that I'm wise, I can see that they were foolish. A, a couple of years, maybe five years into the business, I found them when we were moving between offices, and I and I had to stare at them for a minute and recognize, oh, this is my handwriting. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember when I wrote these, and we had attained all of them. You know, it was just magic. You it's know, wonderful. I, but they were ridiculous. They were things, you know, to do millions of dollars worth of volume and have a certain number of successful people, and they were things that were just really truly outrageous when I wrote them. And it magically happened. Do you have a, a similar list right now going? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we currently intend to become you know, the uh, most successful direct selling company in the world, and in our definition, that means pay out more money to our distributors than any other company does. And we have a ways to go to get to there, but we'll get there. I want our company to do more good than any existent company in the world. And that's pretty goofy. It's pretty big. I think we could. And I think we might, and this is crazy, I'd like to go ahead and solve world hunger of children. You know, and that's outrageous. And yet, we, are, we see our distributors making really interesting headway mm -hmm. toward that. I don't, I don't remember how many meals now they've provided to children, but, but we're going beyond that. We're setting up systems so that they become self-sustaining. Like we're, Malawi is the first place where we've done that. We've been in Malawi where we set up the factory, and they work in the factory, and they grow extra crops, and we buy them, and then they... Uh, they work in the factory to make add our ingredients, uh, which all these things have helped the local economy. But before long, they'll be able to do all that themselves because we have someone who owns the factory, mm -hmm. who later, and he's going around getting people to grow a second crop. They didn't know they could do, but uh, Napoleon, who's who's a jewel, he'll get them to grow a second crop, and he buys it from them, and he, it will become very self-sustaining because the way that the model is set up and because our distributors are, have been so dedicated to it because it's what they do for a living. Looking back as that 25-year-old idealistic young businessman, could you ever have imagined that the company would have gotten this big, that you would have been able to check off so many of those things on that to-do list? Yeah, you know, I the, the quick answer is no. And yet, things that we wrote at the time and stuff match up with these kinds of numbers that we've done. And so uh, we, we, we actually thought we could. And I think that's pretty naive <laughs> now that we thought that. I mean, it just, you know, I mean, we, we really shouldn't have had such grandiose thoughts, but we did. And, uh, but I did not, I didn't translate in my mind what that, what that all meant. You know, when you get to go look into the faces of the kids in Malawi, and when you get to, you know, a distributor whose life was bad and now it's good looking you in the face and with tears in their eyes telling you that. Somehow that didn't all translate into reality, but 
on paper we thought so. So is that a lesson to distributors then not to be afraid to think big because you really never know how much you can achieve? Yeah, to be bold enough to uh, to go after a goal. I don't know what their goals are, but I think I know what makes them happy. And if they can begin to see, match their goals with things that make them happy and go find some opportunity, I don't care if it's ours or any, anyone's, I happen to believe it's ours, <laughs> but if they'll be bold enough to pursue that, which takes you out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. makes life kind of scary. But if you can be bold enough to start doing it and persist and stay with it, and do it in a way that's enjoyable, then you get to be part of the magic result.